Howdy, Beef Lobart here, and welcome. Just wanted to play around a little bit more with the switching template that I was working on from the earlier video, which is available via the Discord channel. But, figured what the heck, I will actually throw in the Polygon Western pack from City Studios so we can actually add some weapons. And we got a map, and we got some other stuff in here too. The map needs some repair work, um, I know right off the bat. So I'm not really worried about the map just yet, but what I would like to do is we're going to go to my test map that I created earlier, and I'm going to go ahead and chuck these two guys for now. And I'm going to move my player start back just to her, and I'm going to go ahead and do a build on it just so it gets it over with. So while it does that, essentially what we're going to do is with the Polygon Western, there is a series of weapons. There's going to be pistols and long guns. So we'll be able to actually switch between weapons. And to get animations, what we'll do is we'll do a basic retargeting. So for those who don't know how to retarget or have taken an interest in the Polygon Studios, uh, the Cine Studio stuff, specifically the Polygons, the um, what we're going to do this is pretty simple. Um, let's first take a look in our mesh folder and characters and what we have is a handful of characters and we have one skeleton. Quickly take a look at that skeleton and I'm going to go ahead and click apply to asset but not sure why it didn't have it applied to the asset to begin with. So we're taking a look at it, normal character. We can actually change a few things on them if we need to but Good enough. And if we look at our retarget manager, it's already set to humanoid and everything should be good to go. He is in a T pose. So if we look at his arm positions, perfectly straight, palms straight down. So we need to remember that arm straight and palms straight down. So if we actually look at the mannequin, look at our character mesh, look at this skeleton, well first off I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that. I'm gonna get rid of... I'm not gonna worry about getting rid of that just yet because there's no need. We're not gonna use this skeleton anymore after this. But as we can see the arms are palm down but they're in a Y pose. So I need to go ahead and raise my upper arms up by 50. Now we need to look at our our forearms here. Now normally I move these arms back by 30, but I keep having issues with um, the Y pose. So I'm going to try 20 and just to see. So it looks relatively straight. It's a little bent, but we're going to leave it at that and then look at our retargeting manager. We need to set the skeletal rig to humanoid. We need to select modify pose, use current pose, and save. <coughs> now, what we're actually going to create first is our unarmed animation system. So, if we hit save all, we're going to come over here and we need a characters folder. So, character and we need to go ahead and create an animations animations and we're going to set up one called unarmed so now we can take the animations that came from the normal UE4 mannequin and I'm going to right click on it retarget animation blueprints or anim blueprints then duplicate anim blueprints and retarget select the polygon western and the first thing I want to do is click in the replace box and I'm going to replace the third person underscore with polygon and I want to change the folder so I'm going to click on the change here I'm going to go to characters animations unarmed and I'm going to click OK and then retarget and it's going to take a couple seconds here. It's going to retarget all the animations and copy them to the correct folder. I'm going to go ahead and hit save all. 
And now I can actually come over here to the third person blueprints. I'm going to go to the blueprints folder. And we have our third person character. So what we need to actually do next is in our characters folder, we need to create a new folder called blueprints. And I want to go back over here to my third person blueprints folder. And I am going to copy this over to here. And I am going to rename this player underscore base. Now, once I open up player underscore base, you see that we have all our lovely stuff from earlier, our begin play and our set primary and all this other stuff. Um, we're going to actually change this around to kind of make it work the way we need to. But let's go to our viewport, go to our mesh. We're going to change our skeletal mesh. And we're going to be cowboy animation class polygon animation blueprint. And there we go. All right, so we can actually compile and save. Now, if we look at our event graph, uh, what we've done earlier is we've created these um, the box gun and cylinder gun in the earlier video to kind of showcase how to actually change weapons and pick them up and so forth. So we need to actually create some new weapons. So if we look at our assets, I'm actually going to ignore the ones we already have. In the root of our assets folder, we're going to create a new folder called guns. We're going to create blueprints. We shouldn't need to do much else here. We're done with that. So let's actually, while we're in our, our test map, let's go ahead and go to our world settings. Select game mode over um, game mode here. And in that, we want to change our default pawn class to player underscore base. And now if we hit play, we can see we have our cowboy. We can jump, we can walk around, we can do everything because we retarget our animations. Everything is lovely. So, that's good to go. Now, let's take a look at our weapons. And in our weapons, all we have is skeletal meshes. Mm, okay, we could probably make do with this. We have two six guns. One's uh, like a Colt Peacemaker. Other one's like a Black Powder Revolver. We've got a lever action rifle, double barrel shotgun, and double barrel shotgun pistol, and a Kniffy. All right, so let's start off with the weapon rifle. So what we need to do now is go to our guns, blueprints, and we need to create the first blueprint, which is going to be rifle. We'll just keep it simple. And we're actually going to be organized in BP underscore rifle underscore um, uh, let's see. We did before was um, the pickup was the actual one that we actually picked up. So we're going to do it a little bit different. We're going to do the pickup or yeah, we'll do the pickup which will actually be the one that's on the ground. So if we look in here now, let's drag this over so we can look at it and come back to our weapons folder. I'm going to select my weapon rifle skeletal mesh, go back in here, add component, skeletal mesh, and I'm actually going to go ahead and add on a box collision. And we can leave it called box, that's fine. And we just need to go ahead and scale this box collision to better fit our weapon. Um, let's see. I hate to move it off of the zero axis this way. So I'm actually going to move the physical rifle. Which I won't do for the actual one that we've we picked up and are using. So let's go ahead and... 
try to scale it to where it's pretty close. It doesn't have to be perfect. You want to overlap a little bit. And then let's go ahead and take both of those and let's go ahead and move them up in the air a little bit just for giggles we're also going to go ahead and do um, rotating movement so it could be cool and spinning and that kind of stuff compile and save now if we go back up here to our blueprints folder we'll grab our riffle blueprint this is the one that will actually be in the map and I'll place that down and let's take a look at it really quickly so it's spinning. If you want to slow it down or speed it up, you can. You don't have to put the rotating movement on. I just did it for the hell of it. So it's not going to do anything yet because we haven't told it to do anything yet. Um, let's make sure that the... Yeah, we want to make sure that... Yeah, probably not what I wanted to do there. Um, and we'll leave it the way it is for now. We c we know what it is, and we know that it's rotating. So let's actually look at this, and we're going to go ahead and delete everything in here. And like we did before, we need to go ahead and we need to grab a few things from our box. I'm going to right click and add event on component begin overlap. And this time we want to cast to player underscore base because that's what we're using we're not using a third person character anymore so and we're doing this as a single player mode we're not setting up multiplayer in this so as that we need to um, it probably wouldn't hurt to go ahead and since like we did before in our third person and our blueprints we had the guns struck and the guns enumerator. Let's go ahead and, like we did before, we'll set up three, we'll set up more this time. So we have box, cylinder, and none. So let's go ahead and I'm going to close this for right now. And we're going to come back up to, well, save all. Our assets folder. And let's go ahead and make a new folder here. Um, call it data so we know what's going in there and let's go ahead and create a blueprint structure we want this to be our weapons list and inside here we're going to do um, a series of, of weapons so we're going to start off with the Peacemaker and the type of actual variable is going to be a skeletal mesh actor or object reference. And we want to grab this and scroll down and we want to find that particular weapon. That would be revolver number one. So we add new variable and we're going to call this. Dragoon. That sounds like a good one. And then we'll actually give it a skeletal mesh of that'll be weapon revolver zero two. Then we have another new variable sawed off. Um, and that one is actually going to be the sawed off shotgun pistol which is shotgun zero two there we go and then we got another one we can go ahead and create is the winchester which was rifle and then we have a shotgun so let's go ahead and add in that new variable and we'll just call that shotgun and that is shotgun zero one the only thing we have left to add is none so we add a variable and we're gonna call this none gun skeletal mesh 
we're not going to assign a mesh to it. So we're going to hit save, and now we have a reference to that. So we go to our character, blueprints, player underscore base. Now, if we look at this, we have one and two. Now, what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to drag this out of the way because we're only focused on number one at the moment. So, we have a primary weapon, skeletal mesh, and we have it right there. It's set as blank. We're going to leave that the way it is. We have main hand, which is the hand that it's going to go into. So we need to confirm that our character, skeleton, actually has in the skeleton here, we're going to add a couple spots, a couple things in. The first one we're going to add is pistol, and we're going to add in riffle. Hmm. Let's actually leave main hand alone for right now. We're going to use main hand as our weapons socket location. So hand R, we're going to add a socket, which is going to be our main hand. We want to go ahead and set our use specific animation. And for now, we don't have a weapon animation because we're in an unarmed state. But we will set up a different animation blueprint later. Rewind it. Let's add a preview asset. And I'm actually just going to go ahead and put in the Peacemaker. So I'm going to rotate it and rotate it and rotate it just so we can put it in the player's hands. This will definitely be adjusted later and we need to rotate it some more. Because he's not actually holding it in a combative method right now. So we're not too awful worried about it. We just want a weapon to show up in his hand. So that's good enough for now. He's just holding on to the weapon. And the other one we're going to want to add in is going to be a holster socket. And we want that actually off of the thigh right. So I'm going to go ahead and add a socket. We're going to call that holster. We're going to add a preview asset. And we want that to be a holster. And then let's go ahead and just move it out. We definitely need to do some rotations on it. And it is absolutely backwards. Let's try it at 180. Let's actually run it back to default so we can throw that back out there so we can actually get a good look at what we're doing here. So we want to position this like a cowboy holster would be. Oh, that's pretty close. We'll rotate it one more time. That's good. We'll actually throw it down, be a little bit more Hollywood, so it's a little bit lower. Sadly, the animation that we're going to have for for that, we won't have an animation correctly for drawing his weapon out. So, eh, whatever. This will have to do for now. So we can hit save and close that. So what we need to do now is we need to add another mesh to our player, and we need to go ahead and add the holster in. So to that we want to add a component and let's actually go to our props. Look for our holster, which is right here. 
we want to add a component which is a static mesh hmm we might be able to get away with that um, holster and we want a parent socket to holster so now our character has a holster on his hip and later what we'll end up doing is we're going to add a pistol here and he'll have a pistol for in his hand right now doesn't really matter all that much we're going to compile and save we're going to hit play and we see we have the holster on our hip and nothing happens when we run over this because we haven't told it to so in our player base in our event graph what we're going to do here is we have all these variables set up for the box gun and stuff like that we're not going to delete them yet so what we need to do is start off with creating a new one and we're going to create two. First one is going to be rifle picked up and rifle visible and we need to create another one which is going to be weapons we need to change that one to whatever the hell that is um, weapons list which is our struct from earlier we're gonna compile and save now we have a list of all of our weapons and what their skeletal meshes are gonna be so we're gonna do away with this so we're gonna bring this down here and we're gonna copy what that was and we're gonna end up having quite a bit of stuff here so let's actually on here the first one is our branch node we're gonna start simple we're only gonna have the one we're only gonna have the rifle so we're gonna get this branch node and we're gonna ask rifle pickup we're gonna get that and drop that onto the branch then we're going to toggle active we're just gonna copy the way this is right here we're going to get a reference to our primary weapon and we are going to toggle active connect that to true and again we're just going to copy exactly how it was above to a certain point because right now we don't have any other weapons we just have the one so we don't even really need to add these other things in yet so let's go ahead and run our next branch mode and we're going to when we hit the number one key we're going to ask is our rifle visible and from there if the rifle is visible see how we did our set skeletal meshes we're going to do that here we're going to get two of them set skeletal mesh off of our primary weapon so we want it off of true we want to if the rifle is visible true then we want to um, set skeletal mesh and control C control V we want to set skeletal mesh again also so true and false we want both of them represented represented for uh, setting our skeletal mesh so now we need to do like we did here and get our struct so let's grab our weapons get weapons and we need to break weapons list from there let's open it up so now we see all of our different weapons here we want Winchester so if the rifle is visible we want to set skeletal mesh to none gun if rifle is not visible then we want to set Winchester to the new skeletal mesh and then to finish it all off we need to 
set rifle visible and I'm just going to copy that and paste it in so now what I want to do is I want to set rifle to visible yes and actually want to do just the opposite with that because we're saying if the rifle is not visible then we need to make it visible so we need to uncheck this one because here which we need to get our weapons there link that in so if the rifle is visible then we want to make it not visible so we set it to none for the skeletal mesh and if the rifle is not visible then we want to make it visible so let's go ahead and compile and save and we need to go into this the rifle pickup so we need to actually go back into our blueprints folder and we want to do this we want to set rifle pickup to true so that should be good enough so let's actually go ahead and just test it out really quickly so now we have nothing we hit one nothing happens walk over here and we forgot to do something we needed to destroy actor get rid of it and that is going to get rid of the blueprint for the weapon so now we go back in here hit one nothing happens come over here we picked up our weapon hit one and now it's in our hands sort of but as you can see it's wrong bigger than hell so let's look at our main hand socket and we need to go to our characters folder and let's look at our main hand we're going to delete the pistol and we're going to add a preview asset of the rifle so if we look at it it to me appears to be in the right location main hand look at our viewport thing is good this should be socketed to the main hand but you can see it's not correct hmm okay temporarily what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add in that rifle so we can see it's wrong so I'm going to go ahead and uncheck real time so I can pause our character and we need to go ahead and fix this alright so it's not going to be perfect again just simply because, well, we don't have the correct animations yet. So for right now, we're just going to get it close. And he's just going to be hanging on to it. We don't care that he's actually shouldering it. We can actually, once we actually finish setting this up as a actual weapon to use and shoot and everything else then we will worry about it uncheck snapping we just want him to be hanging on to the weapon for right now so now he's walking around with it in an unready position when we set up animations later then we'll worry about it so let's go back to real time that looks good good enough so we're going to go back in here and we're going to clear that skeletal mesh compile and save and now when we go in here we walk over pick up our rifle hit the number one key and now we got the gun in our hands so you get the idea what I will do is I'll break this up into a couple different videos so that you, you don't get bored looking at it all at one time so that's how we're going to set up our weapons pickup just like we did before 
and just like in the other videos um, where we created our pickup item and at that point all we're doing is we're, we're changing our skeletal meshes later down the line we will actually be creating individual weapons with different rate of fire different types of shooting and that kind of stuff but for right now we just wanted to have one good solid pickup and test to make sure that it works we could actually do the, the same thing and actually create um, a duplicate of this one and duplicate we can actually call this one shotgun and then in our player character or player underscore base in, the, in this particular situation um, we can grab this and control C control V paste a copy of it what we're gonna do is our number two so we don't even need this anymore we've already done away with that one um, we'll leave this one up here. Actually, no, let's go ahead and get rid of that one as well. We no longer need it. Just like we did before, we'll click on this. We're going to change that number one to keyboard number two. And let's go ahead and compile and save. And we're just going to change this to this. So we're changing it to shotgun and we need to delete these two we need to add our other two variables which is shotgun pu and change that over to boolean create a new one which is going to be shotgun visible and we need to get rid of those two and let's go ahead and grab that and just like we did before the bottom one we're setting as visible the top one we're setting is not visible and then this variable here was shotgun visible get your ass back down there and then right up here we need to get shotgun pickup connect that here and compile save we don't need the rifle pickup we're good we're good with that we need to come back over here to our shotgun pickup and we need to delete that one and we want shotgun set shotgun pickup why is there doubles right there yeah, set pickup and connect there and that. So at that point, all we have to do then is just change the mesh to shotgun one, compile, save, close that, and let's go ahead and there's a shotgun. So now if we hit play, walk in. Grab a rifle, grab a shotgun, got one, and we're going to have to do like we did before with the other one, and, and I deleted the other one, but we kept the original so we could actually use it as a go-to to see how we did this. So it's checking to see if the other one's visible. We added a sequence node in, so at that point we're just going to go ahead and grab that, drag it down so we can get some room, and we actually put the sequence node after the toggle active. So let's grab this, and let's move that over. I want to get plenty of room, we'll add in the sequence node. Move that to there, and we had another branch underneath it. So we got this branch. We're checking rifle visible, and we need to grab shotgun visible. So we're looking at here 
yeah, Chuck Invisible will be the bottom one. So we'll grab that, connect it to there, grab Shotgun Visible, connect it there, and we need to just double check here. So what happens whenever we did this one right here? We set the yep. The bottom one was the other weapon, and we're setting it to. If the shotgun is visible, then go ahead and no, we reverse it this way, so it'll just go to right there. Set skeletal mesh and to the rifle, and make the rifle visible. So now if we look at how we did this one over here, we had the set shotgun visible to false. So we'll do this. Um, actually, let's go ahead and grab shotgun visible, set node, and connect that to there. So this is going to, you know, I've changed the order of which ones I put here. So um, yeah, that should be good. So we need to do the same thing here. And then we'll call it quits on this video and we'll pick up in the next one with adding the rest of the weapons in and setting up the correct variables and cleaning up this mess over here on the left in the variables panel. So what we did was we grabbed this, drag it over to there, drag this over to here, added the sequence node here, and then we added another branch node which will go roughly here, connect that to there, move this variable to here for cleaning. We need to get the rifle visible. So from here, this will connect to here. We need to set rifle visible to faults and then do that. So if the rifle is visible we need to set it to faults and then we need to go ahead and create our skeletal mesh for none. So we are on Winchester we need to actually change that over to shotgun. All right, so hopefully this makes a little sense here. We grabbed our reference to our shotgun and we're forcing it. If the shotgun's visible, not visible, we're telling it to make it visible. If it is visible, we're telling it to make it invisible. So we have our flip-flop type action right there. And yeah, this should work. So let's actually give it a quick test. So we hit one. We got the rifle, hit one again, it goes away. Hit two, we have the double barrel shotgun. Hit two again, it goes away. We hit one, we get a rifle. Two, we get our shotgun. Hit one, we get a rifle again. One again, we have nothing. So lovely, it works perfect. Excellente, that's great. Uh, next video, we'll pick up on adding in the rest of the weapons and we'll start cleaning out some of the extra stuff we don't need and clean up everything else. So. Thanks for watching, and guys, if you want to catch me while I'm streaming and you want to make a donation, again, I want to throw this out there, that um, if you want to donate during the stream, use the link for the Streamlabs. If you want to do it after the effect, then go ahead and just go directly to the paypal.me uh, link for it. So either way, so those donations do help quite a bit, and... They will help me to get new assets and to put food on my table and do all kinds of other lovely things too. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.